In this short video, we're going to look at a more general solution method for linear equations which are non-homogeneous. The method of undetermined coefficients, which we saw previously, has two limitations. The first limitation is that the equation must have constant coefficient. And then the form of the right-hand side function is restricted. Remember that it could only be a combination of constants, polynomials, exponentials, and sine and cosine functions. So we're going to look at a new method, and it uh, is due to Lagrange, and it has no limitations, at least in theory. Um, so let's start by looking at a first-order linear non-homogeneous equation to understand the basics of the method. We know that we can uh, get a solution by using uh, the integrating factor. And then if we integrate both sides of the uh, resulting new differential equation, uh, we get first an explicit solution, I'm sorry, an implicit solution. And then we could uh, divide both sides by e to the integral of p dx and get an explicit solution. Now, uh, if f of x equals 0, we would get a solution to the homogeneous equation. And so if we look at this, if f of x equals 0, then in our explicit solution, the right-hand side would be uh, the integral of 0, the integral of 0, is just going to be a constant. And so uh, our complementary solution then is just some constant times e to the negative integral of p dx. And so we could get a general solution from our complementary solution added to our a particular solution that we could obtain using the integrating factor. So the variation of parameter strategy is the following. We're going to assume that the solution has the, to the, a particular solution has the form of a function multiplied by a solution to the homogeneous equation. So we have a new function, unknown function, that we're going to have to calculate, u sub 1 of x gets multiplied by our known solution, y sub 1, to the homogeneous equation. And so we're going to proceed, as we did in our previous method, we're going to go ahead and take the derivative of our, uh, of the form of our unknown particular solution. We'll have to use the product rule here. And so then I'll take that derivative because we're looking at a first order differential equation. We don't need the second derivative. We'll substitute that into our uh, linear first order differential equation written in standard form. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange the terms. I'm going to collect all of the terms which are multiplied by u sub 1. And when I do that, I see that the terms that are multiplied by u sub 1 are y1 prime plus p of x times y1. Well, remember that y1 prime, that's the same as dy1 dx, and then I'll have plus p y1. y1 is a solution to the homogeneous equations. So those two terms should add to make 0. So now we're left with a very simple differential equation to solve for u1. I'm just going to go ahead and divide both sides by y1 and then integrate in order to get the solution to u1. Now, 
that's not my solution. That's not my particular solution. Remember, we assumed that the particular solution was u1 times y. But once I find u1, I just have to multiply that by y1. And that gives me a particular solution. So let's use this same idea for second order differential equations. We'll go ahead and write it in standard form. And because it's a second order differential equation, we're going to have two solutions, y sub 1 and y sub 2 from the homogeneous equation. So we're going to suppose that our particular solution has two new functions, u1 and u2, where u1 gets multiplied times y1, u2 gets multiplied by y2, and then we take their sum to be the particular solution. So I'm going to have to take the derivative of this assumed form of the particular solution. And then I'm going to take the second derivative. And I'm, I want to find these functions, u1 and u2. And the way that we're going to do that is to substitute these expressions into our non-homogeneous differential equation. Now that gives you a very long expression here with many different terms. Uh, but if we arrange these terms, so in a similar way, I'm going to find all of the terms that are multiplied by u1. I'm going to find all of the terms that are multiplied by u2. And then I have also have a strategic rearrangement of the remaining terms. And let's see why that is a strategic uh, rearrangement. Again, y1 and y2 are solutions to the homogeneous equation. So our general equation with the right-hand side equaling 0. Well, look, all of the terms that are multiplied by u1, that is indeed the differential equation with y equal to y1. So that y1 double prime plus p of x times y1 prime plus q of x uh, times, there shouldn't be a plus sign here, q of x times y1 Get rid of that. And then same thing with u2. I have another solution to the homogeneous equation. And so what does that tell me? That the uh, terms in the bracket should add up to make 0. And let me just correct my mistake again. On this slide, not a plus sign. There we go. And then look at the strategic arrangement here. These terms in blue in the second line. Uh, that I can rewrite as the derivative of u1 prime times y1. And the other two terms in blue can be summarized as the derivative of y2 times u2 prime. So I could get a simplified expression here, or a simplified equation, because the whole first line now is going to be 0. If I look at these uh, terms in blue, that's just the derivative of y1 u1 prime plus y2 u2 prime. And then uh, I just have the coefficients of p and the uh, coefficients that are, uh, there's nothing that's now multiplied by q, and that's going to equal f of x. Now this still doesn't bring me to a point where I can solve it. I'm going to have to make one further assumption. If I assume that the uh, y1 u1 prime plus y2 
u2 prime equals zero, then that means that my first two terms drop out and I'm left with the equation of y1 prime u1 prime plus y2 prime u2 prime equals f of x. This is a system of equations where the coefficients are y1, y2, y1 prime, y2 prime. The unknowns, remember, because y1 and y2 are known functions, the unknowns are u1 prime and u2 prime. So I can write this in matrix form, and then I can solve this equation using Kramer's rule. And so Kramer's rule involves, first we take a determinant of the coefficients. In this case, we've seen this determinant before. It's called the Ronskian. So before we were just using the Ronskian to test if our solutions were linearly uh, dependent or linearly independent. Uh, but we know that our solutions to the homogeneous equations are going to be linearly independent. So we know that the value of the Ronskian here is going to be non-zero. Then in Kramer's rule, the way you solve is in order to find, uh, we need two other determinants. Our w sub one is the coefficient determinant, the Ronskian, with the first column replaced with the right-hand side. And then in w sub two, we replace the second column with the right-hand side. And uh, then from Kramer's rule, the value of the first variable is going to be uh, w1 over w. So our first variable here is u1 prime. If I calculate the determinant, I'm just going to get uh, zero going across the diagonals and then subtract off y2 times f. And then for our second variable, that would be w2 over w. Second variable is u2 prime. If I calculate its derivative along the diagonal, I get y1f. And along the anti-diagonal, I get 0. And so now I have expressions for u1 prime and u2 prime. From there, I could integrate both sides to get values for u1 and u2. And finally, to get my particular solution, I would have to multiply u1 times y1, add that to u2 times y2. So let's see how we do that in an example. So here I have a linear second order non-homogeneous differential equation. So let's go ahead and find the uh, solution to the corresponding homogeneous equation. I'm going to have an auxiliary equation, uh, which is the square of a binomial. It's m minus 2 quantity squared, which means I only have one root with multiplicity 2. So my complementary function is a constant times e to the 2x plus a different constant times x times e to the 2x. So y1 is e to the 2x. Its derivative is 2e to the 2x. y2 is x e to the 2x. Its derivative, uh, using the product rule, is e to the 2x plus 2x e to the 2x. And so we're going to use Kramer's rule now to solve for u prime and uh, u1 prime and u2 prime. So we can skip straight to Kramer's rule here. Um, we have to be careful. When we were just trying to determine if we had linear dependent or independent functions, uh, we could substitute a number in for x. In this application, we can't substitute a number because um, we need to have a function as uh, the output of w. So we are going to go ahead and just use our product of the diagonals and subtract the product of the anti-diagonals, collect the like terms, and we get a simple function w equals e to the 4x. Now we'll calculate w1, 
and W2. And then we can use those values or those functions to find U1 prime is W1 over W. So uh, we have this coef this multiplier e to the 4x that divides out. And then all I have to do is take the derivative, I mean the antiderivative of negative x squared minus x, and that gives me u1. And likewise, uh, u2 prime uh, is just w2 divided by w, which gives me the formula x plus 1, and its antiderivative is half x squared plus x. I'm not done yet. Remember, I have to multiply u1 times y1. So u1 gets multiplied by y1. u2 will get multiplied by y2. And we'll add those together to get the particular solution. And so now we have a particular solution. Uh, we have uh, a complementary solution. So we can add those together to get the general solution. Let's do a second example. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and start off by putting that in standard form. We'll get the solution to the uh, auxiliary equation. So we get the solution to the homogeneous equation. And it's going to involve sines and cosines. So our y1 is cosine of 3x, and its derivative is negative 3 sine of 3x. y2 is sine of 3x, and its derivative is 3 cosine of 3x. And so I like to write things in this form because it makes a kind of table uh, or matrix, if you want to think of it that way, or determinant. And this way, I don't have to write out the w determinant uh, Explicitly, I know that what I can do is this would be my uh, diagonal. This would be my anti-diagonal. So to find w, I would take you know cosine of 3x times 3 cosine of 3x, then subtract off the product of sine of 3x and negative 3 sine of 3x. So that's what I've done here. And there's an identity in here. Um, Maybe you don't see it immediately. So if I factor out the 3, inside I have cosine squared of 3x plus sine of squared of 3x. Of course, that's going to equal 1. So 3 times 1 will give me 3 for the Ronskian. So in this case, the Ronskian is actually a constant value. Uh, for w1, I'm just going to use this uh, formula. If I forget this formula, I can always go back to using Kramer's rule. Uh, but uh, this gives me a little bit of a shortcut. Remember, cosecant of 3x is uh, 1 over sine of 3x. So uh, now I'm just going to be left with negative 1 fourth. Uh, W2 is a little bit uh, more involved. So I'll have cosine of 3x over sine of 3x. That gives me cotangent of 3x. And I still have the multiplier 1 fourth. So let's go ahead and uh, find the values then for u1 prime and u2 prime using Kramer's rule. So I'm going to go ahead for u1, I'm going to take w1 over w, that's still just a constant, and the antiderivative of negative 1 12th then would be negative 1 12th x. You may ask, why don't I put a constant of integration? And the answer is, uh, we're only looking for a particular solution. So we're always going to choose that constant of integration to be zero. Um, so u2 prime is more involved. I have to find the antiderivative of cotangent of 3x. Uh, the way that I can do that is write cotangent of 3x as cosine of 3x over sine of 3x. After I make a u substitution, I will get another uh, factor of one third out in front. That gives me the 1 over 36. And it's going to be natural log of my uh, u substitution, which would have been sine of 3x. 
So um, now I've got to multiply each one of those by their corresponding y function. So I'll go ahead and multiply u1 times y1 and u2 times y2. That gives me the particular solution. We weren't asked for the uh, uh, general solution, but if we just add the complementary function to our particular solution, then um, we have the general solution. Now, sometimes after you find u1 prime and u2 prime, you're left with an integral which does not have a solution in terms of elementary functions. It probably has a solution in terms of power series, but instead of writing it out as a power series, we're just going to leave it in integral form and we're going to write it this way. So you can see that uh, this integral here is the formula on top I have. Uh, so minus y2 f is my w1 and we're dividing it by w which is the Ron scheme and the same idea over here. So let's look at an example. We're asked to find the general solution of y double prime minus y equals one over x. Our auxiliary equation then um, gives us uh, m equals plus or minus one, so two real distinct roots. And so then I'm going to get uh, a c1 times e to the x plus c2 e to the negative x. So that tells me y1 equals e to the x and y1 prime will also be e to the x. y2 is e to the negative x and y2 prime is negative e to the negative x. So go ahead and multiply the diagonals, subtract the product of the anti-diagonals, and we'll get uh, another constant. Constant w equals negative 2. But now I, in order to find um, uh, my values for u1 prime and u2 prime, I'll go ahead and use our formulas for w1 and w2. And then I see if I want to find the uh, value for u1, I would have to find an antiderivative for e to the negative x over x. And there is no antiderivative in terms of elementary functions. So what we're going to do instead is we are just going to integrate both sides. And when I integrate the right-hand side, I'm going to write it as the integral from x naught to x of e to the negative t over t dt. And we're just using t here as a dummy variable. This just defines u1 as a function of x. And so then uh, do the same thing with u2. And then the last step in order to find the particular solution would be to uh, multiply those values of u1 and u2 by the corresponding y1 and y2. That gives me the particular solution. And I didn't write it down because I ran out of space. But if I took the particular solution and added it to the complementary solution, then we would get the general solution of our differential equation. And then we're going to end by talking about higher order equations. We won't do any examples uh, because the computations just become uh, more intense without actually providing additional learning opportunities. But just so you know, you, this would work. Um, so for a, a third order equation, as an example, we would have three solutions to the three linearly independent solutions to the corresponding homogeneous equations. Now we would have three unknown functions, u1, u2, and u3. And then I could try to solve that. Uh, it's still feasible using Kramer's rule. And so I would solve for u1 prime, u2 prime, and u3 prime. Uh, and uh, then I could... Uh, integrate both sides, get expressions for u1, u2, and u3, 
And then my particular solution would be the uh, product of u1 with y1, u2 with y2, u3 with y3, and adding those up. So you can still use this technique with uh, higher order equations.